Hello and welcome to lesson 103. In the last lesson, we tracked and solved our clip while looking deeper at the controls in the cinema and the viewer. In this lesson, we'll add a new node to reorient our virtual camera and from there export our completed 3D scene. Just as a quick recap, after we solved our clip in the previous lesson, we used the viewer to check out the 3D data that was generated and we noted some structures which matched up with our physical clip. We also noted that the points representing the ground in our clip weren't lined up with the virtual ground plane in the viewer. So our next task is to add a new node to make sure everything is lined up correctly. We're going to use the Orient Camera node and we can find this node in the Utilities group inside of the Node panel. And this time we'll use the third and final method to add a node to our tracking tree. Make sure that the camera solver is selected in the tree so that when the new node is added it will automatically be connected. To add the node, click and hold the left mouse button and then drag it into the tree. When the node is over the tree, the plus symbol will appear and you can let go and it will automatically be connected. If you want to reposition a node just to tidy it up a little bit, click and hold the left mouse button on the node again and then just drag it into position. Once in position, make sure it's the active node. The Orient Camera node allows us to position and scale our virtual camera so it lines up correctly with our physical footage. The first task we will tackle is ensuring the virtual ground plane lines up with the ground in our clip. Next, we will set the correct scale for our scene, which is an important step and I'll explain that later on. I'm now going to show you the most straightforward and efficient method to establish the correct height for our tracked and solved features. Rotate the view around so you can see the points on the ground more easily. Then click on the marquee tool button and either using the cinema view or the viewer, select one of those points. Now click the set origin button. This action aligns the sole feature at the same height as the virtual ground plane. When we rotate the viewer around slightly, we'll see we're already closer to the desired result. The terrain in this specific clip is uneven and sloped, making it very difficult to achieve a perfect match. However, our objective is to come as close as possible. In the next step, we'll employ the rotate controls to adjust our camera. Additionally, we will ensure that our axis are oriented correctly, represented by the green, red and blue arrows. PivTrack actually uses a left-handed coordinate system, and what this means is that the green axis is pointing upwards, and the blue axis faces away from the camera. And this alignment proves advantageous when integrating CG assets that share the same coordinate system, as it ensures that both scene and asset have the same orientation. Using the edit modes, I will select Rotate. This will display three manipulators for each axis in each of the windows, and I can use these to adjust my camera. The goal is to ensure that the axes are correctly positioned. The ground aligns with the virtual ground plane, and the white line representing the horizon matches the horizon line in the clip. It's also worth switching to one of the other viewer modes like Ortho Left and Ortho Right, as you can see the ground a little bit easier. In the edit mode, I can also use the translation controls to refine the height of my ground, specifically adjusting the y-axis. This allows me to accommodate for the gentle slope of the ground, ensuring that the lowest part of my scene makes contact with the virtual ground plane. Once I'm done adjusting, I will set the edit mode back to none. If I now play through the clip, we can see the virtual ground plane is overlaid in the cinema and moving realistically with the real world footage. The last thing we need to do is set the scale of our scene, which as I mentioned earlier, is quite an important step. Setting up a virtual 3D scene with real world scale ensures that our physical clip, virtual cameras and CG assets all integrate with each other in a consistent, realistic and believable way. We can set the scene scale in PF Track in a few different ways, but for the purpose of this lesson, I'll be showing you the most straightforward method, and that is to set the scale using a tracked features distance from the camera. In the example clip, I've taken a rough measurement from the focal plane of the camera at the starting position to the wall of the building in front. I'm going to make sure I'm at the first frame of my example clip, which is the starting position where the physical measurement was taken. And then next, I will select one of the tracking markers on the building opposite, roughly about the height of the camera. Once a point is selected, you can actually see the current estimated distance from the virtual camera in the distance box here. Now I know this value can't be right because the building is definitely not under 5 meters away. So I'll click the distance box and I'm going to input my known value of 12.5 meters 
and then press enter on the keyboard. When I do, the entire scene will scale based on my known value. You can actually use the uh, virtual ground plane as a reference to gauge the scale of your scene. The distance from the earlier set origin point to the edge of the ground plane is 10 meters. And from this, we can observe that our scene, considering our input value, appears appropriately scaled. Having successfully tracked, solved, and oriented our example clip, the final step is to transfer all of our efforts for use in another application. This is accomplished by adding one last node to our tree. As a recall from the previous lesson, we explored the I.O. group in the node panel, which includes three nodes for importing and two for exporting. Now we're interested in a node called Scene Export, and we use this node to export everything that's related to our 3D scene. The other export node called Footage Export is used for exporting anything related to our clip. This might be the footage itself, any masks we've created, as well as any dev depth and optical flow. Our goal for this lesson is to export our virtual camera and the accompanying data. So far we've looked at three different methods of adding a node to our tracking tree, and that was double clicking the node in the node panel, clicking the right mouse button and selecting the node from the menu, and finally clicking and dragging the node into the tree from the node panel. Now you can use any method you like on this last node, but I'm going to be using the double click method to add the scene export. We're going to be covering the extended functionality of the scene export node in another lesson. So for now, we're only going to briefly look at a couple of parameters which are relevant to us in this lesson. So the first thing you might want to change is the format in which you'd like to export your 3D scene. There are quite a few options available uh, for different destinations and purposes. I'm actually going to leave mine as Autodesk FBX, but you can go ahead and change this if you have a specific destination for your scene. Depending on the export format, one really cool feature of the scene export node is everything that we actually see here in the viewers will be exported. So in our case, that'll be the virtual camera and also our trackers. If our scene includes geometry, textures, point clouds, or even multiple cameras, we have an option to export these as well. This illustrates the richness of data that can be generated and why PFTrack is crucial in the VFX pipeline. The scene export node is also very flexible in that you can actually adjust what you want to export within each of these tabs. If my intention was to add some CG to the front of the building here, and I was only interested in the solve trackers in that area, I could actually select the trackers in the foreground and exclude them from the export. You can also do this with individual trackers as well. Or if I want to export the camera on its own, I could select all the trackers and exclude them from the export. When we click the export button here, PFTrack will send the 3D scene to the default export path inside of the project folder. If you want to change the export path, you can click the edit button here and use the browser button to change the location where your export is going. This is also the button to change the file name of the exported scene. Currently my scene has the default file name. While we can edit it here, we can also change the export folder and file name together in one go by editing the name of the export list on the left here by simply double clicking it. I'm going to name mine Project 100 Scene and then hit enter. When I do, you will see both the file name and the file path change automatically. What's really great about export lists is you can actually have multiple export lists and tailor them for different purposes and destinations. They're a really powerful way to export all of your hard work. Now the export is set, we can go ahead and click the export button. And after a few moments, we should see a confirmation message informing us our export was successful. And this concludes lesson 103. Just to recap what we've done in this lesson, we've added a node to reorient our camera. We've set the scale of our scene using a known distance from the camera. And we've also exported our completed 3D scene.